big news stories happening with Gilda. On the program today, we discuss Nigeria's national statement at the ongoing 79th United Nations General Assembly. We we'll take a look at how we can prevent serious effects to the zoonotic disease called rabies. And in sport, an audit has been put in play by the Ministry of Sport over the 2024 Olympics. This and a lot more on this show. This is live from Abuja. A show that takes you through the event that I've shared the week in Nigeria and across the world from politics, news, entertainment and sport. Hello and welcome. I am Ademola Lawrence. I am Jane Francis Mweze. I will start with uh, Onga. The 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly, Onga, opened on September 10th, 2024, with high level week taking place uh, to September 20 to 27 in New York. Nigeria's President Bola Tinubu, represented by Vice President Kashim Shetima, read Nigeria's national statement at the event with a focus on seeking debt forgiveness for not just Nigeria, but other developing nations. He urged the multinational, uh, multilateral financial institution and global creditors to implement comprehensive debt relief measures to support economic progress in the global south, highlighting that the current global financial architecture uh, places undue pressure on developing nations hindering their efforts to improve uh, citizens' welfare. President Tinubu also pressed for reforms in international financial systems, calling for a rules-based, non-discriminatory, open, fair, inclusive, equitable, and transparent multilateral training system, trading system, stressing the importance of recovering illicit financial flows and returning stolen assets to their countries of origin. According to him, such changes are essential to addressing persistent challenges developing countries face from poverty to hyperinflation a little quote from the remarks by president joe biden states the future will be won by those who unleash the full potential of their people to breathe free to think freely to innovate to educate to live and love openly without fear and also from the secretary of state the u.s secretary of state anthony j blinking he said we're here today to view the future in which our citizens their children their grandchildren can live in peace and security in a world without nuclear weapons. OPAS has the surest guarantee of global action to address the existential challenges we face, singularity and nationalism, uh, undermining the aspirations towards the peaceful and collective resolution of such challenges. From last year's summit, and indeed from previous years, we have carried over the numerous challenges of terrorism, armed conflict, inequality, poverty, racial discrimination, human rights abuses, food crisis, hunger, irregular migration, piracy, global pandemics, hyperinflation, nuclear proliferation, grinding their burden, climate change, and a host of other vexations. I think it's a major uh, discussion uh, in Hungary there. And if you ask me, I think to a large extent, uh, the African leaders, although over the years it's been like a cliche, you know, where they go to Hungary to discuss issues about wh why the, uh, the continent need to be uh, given more attention, you know. Uh, one of those reasons they are also putting forward is that Africa needs to be on the UN Security Council uh, be a member of the UN Security Council and of course that's been a very very interesting one and um, you will look at what exactly Africa is um, talking about in terms of US Security Council. I think it's, well, it's, a very, it's a very good one but it's just a cliche over time. Well looking at all the things that you know we have achieved with the um, UN General Assembly over the years um, charters being signed, discussions being opened up. You talk about the SDG, um, and um, you know you look at where Nigeria is from when it started to the year target. Um, I think um, even before we got to the SDG, there was MDG, and yeah. it's not like we met up with the MDG, yeah. and now we are 
at the SDG where we're looking at what's the healthcare system, what's the improvement we're seeing in the healthcare system. Uh, do we now have basic access to, um, you know, basic healthcare, like people in the village, can they easily access healthcare? You look at the universal basic education, um, we're wondering, um, the question is, how much um, free education do people have at the basic education, education level? Education is very expensive now, I must tell you. I'm, I'm even talking, with, now maybe you're looking at university, but we're saying people who are actually, you know, when we talk about the, the poorest of the poor, and then you say there is a basic education, which is a primary education. Yes. So are they going to get education enough? Like our parents or our grandparents got in the days when at primary six they were able to even teach you know other people because at primary six you could apply to be a teacher and all that so um those are the questions what's what what's the quality of the basic education that we're offering for free to the poorest of the poor without I, people I, wanting to go to the private school i think I, I think i get your points there and of course one of the discussions also on that particular scene is the fact that Nigeria is asking for a forgiveness of debt. So that's, so that's the thing, because at the end of the day, what would make more people interested mm. in ONGA, you know, when they say uh, there's a UN General Assembly going on, Nigerians mm. are going to be more interested because they have had actual benefit mm. from the previous years. Mm. So right now it just looks like, um, you know, a couple of bourgeois leaders gathering, bourgeois leaders. <laughs> gathering and making so it it's always, like the decisions. You know, it's always been like that for over, over years. It's just that it's just like it's a cliche when they go to the general assembly, UN general assembly, they talk, they talk, but action, the action plan is the most important. But let's go to the headlines now and tell you that the presidency has stated that President Bola Tinubu will soon reshuffle his cabinet. And by Onunu got a special advisor to the president on information and strategy. To state house correspondent on Wednesday, the president has expressed his desire to reshuffle his cabinet and he would do it. Uh, the spokesperson also said the president has asked his minister to actively communicate the milestones and achievements of the administration. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Senator George Akume, has unveiled the programs for the 64th Independence Anniversary on the occasion, saying the president has instructed that the ceremony be marked at low key. On the issue of food scarcity, the SGF said Nigeria has no reason to import food, but for the meantime, the government has made provisions for food importation to cushion the effects of um, current food scarcity in the country while distribution of farm imputes is ongoing across the nation. And Vice President Kashif Shetima reads Nigeria's national address at the 79th United Nations General Assembly seeking debt forgiveness for developing nations, including Nigeria. He also met with United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres at the UN headquarters in New York, where they discussed issues bordering on pressing issues of regional security, humanitarian relief, and Nigeria's role in international cooperation. Hmm. Trust you. And that's Central Bank of Nigeria. CBN says its multiple interest rate hikes last year have helped boost Nigeria's confidence in the currency, Naira. CBN Governor Laimi Kadusu uh, stated this at a press briefing on Tuesday at the end of the 297th meeting of the Monetary Policy Committee, MPC, in Abuja. Kadusu announced the committee's decision to further raise monetary policy rates, which measures interest rates by 50 basis points from 26.75% to 27.25% to tighten inflation rates, which stands at 32.15%. The federal government may spend about 236 billion naira monthly to subsidize, subsidize the premium motor spirit, popularly called petrol, that is imported through the Nigerian National uh, Petroleum Company and the one that is solely off-taken by NNPC from the Dangote a Petroleum Refinery. On Monday, the president and chief executive of Dangote Group, Alaji Aliko Dangote, and called on the federal government to end for subsidies completely. He said uh, the removal will help determine the actual petrol consumption in the country as his position uh, received backing from the Independent uh, Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria and the Center for Promotion of Public Enterprise in Tuesday. And also, Dr. United States President Jubadi has said that he will provide Ukraine with military aid totaling nearly $8 billion ahead of a meeting with his Ukrainian counterpart, Vladimir Zelensky. 
Biden announced the surge in security assistance for Ukraine on Thursday, saying that the aid will be provided in two trenches of $5.5 billion and $2.4 billion. The package, including the provision of joint standoff weapon JSOW munitions to enhance Ukraine's long-range strike capabilities. A Japanese court has ruled that an 88-year-old former boxer was not guilty in a retrial of 1966 quadruple murder, uh, reversing an earlier decision that made him the world longest serving death row inmate. It was Akamada, acquitted by the uh, Suzuka District Court, makes him the fifth death row convict uh, to be found not guilty in a retrial in post-war Japanese criminal justice. This case could rekindle a debate around abolishing death penalty in Japan. Interesting. Interesting. A diagnosis turns the lives of the entire family upside down. Families and research groups observe September's Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. The objective of the Childhood Cancer Awareness Month is to put a spotlight on the types of cancer that largely affect children, survivorship issues, and importantly, to help refuse raise funds for research and family support. The cancer types that occur most often in children are very different from the cancer types that occur mainly in adults. Worldwide, more than 275,000 children and adolescents aged 0 to 90 years are estimated to be diagnosed with cancer per year. Leukemia, brain cancer and hypoharms are the most common types of overall young children also develop tumors specific to their young age such as a neuroblastoma and retinoblastoma or kidney tumors preventing these cancer types to, is difficult because the causes are not yet well understood. In high-income countries where comprehensive services are generally accessible, more than 80% of children with cancer are cured. In low- and middle-income countries, less than 30% are cured. Interesting. Hmm. All right, join us. Okay. Uh, I think that a, a lot of times uh, these kind of issues or, or don't need to be really be discussed, you know. But let's go to rabies now. This year's theme for the World Rabies Day is breaking rabies boundaries. This team was chosen to highlight the need for progress and moving beyond status quo. Rabies control programs offer a great example to operationalize One Health building the structures and trusts that are crucial to establish systems for uh, other zootonic um, diseases, including those that are pandemic prone. It calls for innovative strategies and collaboration across various sectors and regions, highlighting the importance of integrating human, animal and environmental health efforts by breaking boundaries. We can overcome geographic, socioeconomic and educational barriers, ensuring widespread vaccination, awareness and access to medical care. This unified approach is crucial in the fight against rabies, fostering a world where the disease is no longer a threat to both humans and animals. The world has the vaccines, medicines, tools and technologies to break the cycle of one of the oldest diseases. Together in unity, we can eliminate rabies. This theme highlights the need for cross-sectoral and cross-border collaborations, bringing together governments, health organizations, veterinary services and communities. In addition, there is a double meaning in the theme in that rabies itself does not recognize borders or boundaries and so it is a transboundary disease. The theme further emphasizes the importance of quality, equality and strengthening overall health uh, systems by ensuring that one health is not for a selected few but rather something that should be available to everyone. Mm. And join us uh, live is Associate Professor of Veterinary Public Health and Preventive Medicine, Faculty of Vet and uh, Medicine, Abu Zaria, Grace Sabo uh, Nukia. Hope I just pronounced that name <laughs> correctly. Please just help me. Did I? Nok. 
knock here. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. I think for this is just me. a very interesting topic. I think sometimes last week was it last week or two weeks ago? Two I saw, weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago? I saw a video on, on the internet where uh, a boy was actually you know on the sick bed, and we, we heard that it was because as a result of babies, you That's know, right. you know. So, but tell us more what we need to know about uh, this disease. That, say it's the oldest in the world. Yes. Um, so rabies is a disease that is caused by the rabies virus and it actually targets the central nervous system and the brain. Hmm. So generally in Africa and Asia the, 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 the vehicle, the means of transmission to humans hmm. is the dog. While in the other Western worlds is uh, wild animals because they have been able to successfully eliminate rabies that is transmitted from the dog to human. But in Africa and Asia, we are still having the dog as the major means of uh, trans the, tr the major transmitter yeah. to uh, humans through the bite generally. But of course, mm. you know, you know, you know how I had to roll my eyes. I'm trying to okay. Why the difference in animals? Why the difference? One is dog. One is the wild animals. So why is it because of the continent? Is it because of the weather? Why the difference? I really want to understand why that difference. Thank you very much. You see, uh, in the other Western world, they have been able to eliminate through vaccination of dogs okay. and cats okay. right. against rabies. All right. So, the trans humans don't get uh, rabies from dogs and cats because they are taking care of that. It's only the wild animals. And even that, they're even working on it because they have oral bait vaccines. But here in Africa, where about 21,000 people die due to dog transmitted rabies, we still have, uh, haven't worked on vaccinating our dogs and if we want to have a herd immunity whereby our dogs are whereby we're able to stop this dog transmitted rabies we need to vaccinate minimum of 70 percent of our dogs now in nigeria we have approximately 13 million dogs approximately so if we want to have a country whereby we are free of rabies we need to vaccinate nine million dogs annually yes for the next five years non-stop annually then we're sure that we'll get to that point and then after that all we need to be worried about is any other dog that will, that will come with the rabies vac uh, infection from another country because of cross-border trans um, movement of dogs you know because uh, we have the dog markets which are really thriving in the country and so we need to really monitor and regulate the movement of these dogs in and out of our country. All right. So if, if I mean, if our lives are this much endangered, you know, um, because of um, dog, uh, um, dog cat um, transmission, or at least specifically dog right now, we know. And um, how do we, um, how do you think that a government can come in? in terms of strong regulations because i know that even to travel outside to travel to some countries with your dog you need a visa for the dog That's right. so um but we have to start with taking care of the dogs in nigeria first yeah. of all yeah. before we start one uh, um, thinking about the ones coming from outside yes. so how do we start this massive vaccination so yeah the country has actually started mass vaccination uh 2021 it's just that the vaccines are still not enough. Um, and it's not just about providing the vaccines, it's also providing the logistics in, so that you make sure that the vaccines are being used. They need, the doc, veterinary doctors need syringes, needles. They need transportation to get to the places that uh, people have dogs. Um, we have, you see, in the urban settings, people can easily take their dogs to the veterinarians for vaccination. But in the rural settings, people don't even have the money to feed sufficiently. Talk more of being able to 
take their dogs for vaccination because the vaccines are not cheap. And so we need the, the government to be able to fund dog vaccination adequately. Um, presently, the veterinary preventive uh, department, the, the Department for Preventive Medicine is under the Ministry of Agric. And the budget, based on what I have, the information that I've gotten, the budget is not is not sufficient. We are under the Ministry of Agri. Uh, very little comes down to the veterinary um, preventive medicine. Yes, department. And so, the prayer is when the uh, ministry, the, the, federal, the ministry of uh, the federal ministry of livestock and animal health is established indeed and begins to function, exactly. then we'll be able to have sufficient fund, hopefully budgeted for zoonotic diseases, that is diseases that are transmissible from animals to humans and vice versa, then we'll have sufficient money, uh, uh, funding, to take care of diseases like rabies. All right, but, but while we're getting to this funding and hoping that it comes, um, do you think that if truly, you know, the veterinary team drives down to, say, my village meets a farmer mm -hmm. going to hunt, um, with his dog mm -hmm. and says we need to vaccinate, do you think he's going to take it really lightly? Like, what's the awareness level so far? So it depends on where your village is, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I must tell you that we're working with the grassroots. Like, my organization, War Against Rabies Foundation, since 2017, we've been working. And there are other organizations too that are really coming down to the level of the grassroots communities. Uh, to work with them in 2017, to be specific, we the, 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 we had the first um, community engagement with the hunters in Plateau State because they have this established um, uh, hunting association, and it was really interesting. We fed them, and uh, they were well, you know, in a very beautiful uh, hall, and then you know we we talked with them. It was rabies that we went for, but we opened the discussion to cover other zoonoses because at that time there was outbreak. Uh, we were just coming out of Ebola, yeah. and then Lassa was ongoing. Going. And so um, we answered their questions because my team is a combination of is one health team. Uh, so we talked with them, and and then in 2019 we had a workshop uh, that was funded by the African Center of Excellence in Neglected Tropical Diseases and Forensic Biotechnology. Uh, uh, domicile in Amadibelo University Zaria, funded by the World Bank, and they mandated me to host and organize this biphasic workshop. The first week was um, for the medics, the veterinarians, and the uh, laboratorians, while the second week was for the hunters and the community health workers, both animal and health. And we had advocacy visit the last day to the community leads, leaders, like the Hakimis, the, um, the, ch the rural chiefs, you know, and we were able to listen to the hunters and to this, our community leaders speak to us, share with us. Why was it in 2013, there was, I was also asked to organize a workshop, mm -hmm. a, 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 hunt, a vaccination, and we only had 600 dogs that were brought, and we know that we have more than that in that little community of Sabon Gariz area where ABU is domiciled. And so they told us that they believe that the vaccination of dogs against rabies makes their dogs to be infertile mm? <coughs> and they're not able to give birth. And then secondly, the dogs are not able to hunt as much because a lot of them keep dogs for hunting. You see one person having like nine dogs hunting for hunting. And so they don't have money to vaccinate because like in Abuja, vaccination is about uh, to vaccinate a dog like the ten thousand naira, I think. But in real, uh, in like Kaduna, it could be like five thousand. So it depends on where, and uh, some other places it might even be three thousand. Um, okay, so all right. Okay, so, so, so okay, so I, I wanted to ask this question. Yeah. Um, you know, there's this. Um, before I come to the meet, you know, there is. The people, the people who eat dog. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like hey, that? No, you turned and looked at me. You turned and looked at me. You turned and looked at me. So I'm not the one looking at you. <laughs> okay. You know, so the people who eat dogs, you know, there's the people that eat bush dog. <laughs> I was expecting that question. 
<laughs> okay, so the bush duck eaters, um, and so and all the other animals, and all the other animals. But let's just even narrow it down to dogs mm. because that's what we're talking about. Mm. You know, so does this in any way, you know, uh, affect? In, you know, affect predisposed. Yeah, predisposed to, rabies, to rabies. Yes, although I already ha I have a doctor back in the stage who tell me once you cook something, it has, it has gone. But nothing can. No, no, no. But I just wanted to know. Then, if so, what are the preventive tips that you can give people and uh, to to guide against that? Then, thirdly, just pack this question in one. People who actually nurse these dogs you know we've seen on, on on the internet where you know dogs just go wild and you know attack uh, their owners and sometimes so what what are the preventive tips that you, you can give but start from the bush doggo <laughs> okay so um the danger is in the handling and the slaughtering of dogs okay. because uh if the dog is infected because it's not, dogs are not it's not all dogs are are infected with rabies mm -hmm. is when they are also exposed to another animal that has rabies yes. uh, that they also get infected so our dogs are I mean don't be afraid of dogs keep dogs uh, keep pets because we need them you know uh, and they're also asking us to take care of them uh, mm -hmm. so they don't get rabies they don't want to get have the rabies because mm -hmm. they don't want to bite their owners or other people mm -hmm. so um, the rabies virus is located in uh, by the by the time the person is uh, uh, the dog is beaten the virus moves to the central nervous system right to the brain so after multiplying it takes over the brain and then well to cut the story short the long story short it gets the saliva wow. right so we have it lodged in the nervous, nervous systems system. right so during the time of slaughtering if per adventure there's a splash of any of the nervous tissue that, that, that is infected, carrying the, the, the rabies virus, mm -hmm. and it splashes into your mucous membranes of the eyes. Okay. You can, the person gets exposed to rabies, wow. right? And then um, if he has cuts on the hand or she, mm -hmm. uh, and it gets into the so cuts, and that's why we say don't allow dogs to lick your wounds because if it's a rabid dog, you can get infected, not, wow. just, not just bite. So any opening in the skin. And so for those people that eat dogs, if it's cooked, yeah. they're safe. I'm not saying eat dog. Okay. Please. <laughs> I'm not saying eat dog, but mm. because you see the rabies virus, even though it's very dangerous, it's very, very easy to destroy. Okay. Just a temperature of 56 degrees destroys the rabies virus. It's an RNA virus. It's very easy to, to denature. So... And you know when we cook here, mm. we cook up to 100 degrees Celsius. So for cooking, mm. uh, eating cooked, it's, it's safe. So, um, but for those that like take uh, the brain tissue, yeah. uh, maybe in concoctions, because I've seen people that come to buy the brain just to make some herbal concoctions yeah. for one thing or the other. Yeah. For adventure, you have like a little wound in your mouth okay. and the virus lodges there. It goes, multiplies, moves to the brain, and you know the person can become rabid. Mm -hmm. So it's safer to stay away from uh, such practices. The second question was. <laughs> okay, so no, I, I was just saying that. Look at the tips that you give to tips. people. Yeah, the tips that you preventive give. Tips. Preventive tips that you give to people. Uh, so when a person is beaten, or when a person thinks he's exposed to any rabid animal. Mm -hmm. First of all, if it's a dog, by if it's a bite, mm. a scratch, wash the play, the, the wound with plenty or the scratch with plenty soap, uh, mm. plenty water, mm. and soap for like five to fifteen minutes. Okay, right, and then you immediately seek the doctor's help. Go to a hospital. The doctor will com communicate with the veterinarian so that there is. Uh, the animal investigation to find out if the animal is rabid. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, you'll be the person will be vaccinated, and based on the investigation done, they will determine if the person will not take one dose or the full dose. Because okay. the full dose <laughs> is from that first day of exposure, 
so we call it day zero, mm -hmm. then you go to day three, day seven, day 14, and 21 so, or 28. So there needs to be complete <coughs> administration of that vaccine. Okay. Uh, so that you don't take, you don't go back and say, ah, oh, but I got vaccinated, but the per I, I'm still having the, I'm, I'm coming down with rabies. Mm -hmm. You need to complete the vaccine. Okay. All right. So, uh, and then I'm wondering, you know, there are a lot of street vets, uh, street dogs rather, mm -hmm. and all the pets out there unaccounted for mm -hmm. and who is going to take them um, to vaccination so what do we start doing as a country mm -hmm. that it's serious about combating rabies especially um, to human trans um, transmission level yeah so you know I, I talked about provision of vaccines and the logistics because the veterinarians and the animal health workers which we train the vets train in different schools are also knowledgeable on how to con to capture roaming dogs in nigeria we don't we, we don't have stray dogs if you see any dog straying is mad we call them roaming dogs because by the time you investigate you find out that it has owner and oh, there's an owner there it's owned it's owned roaming dog it's not a stray dog all right but a baby dog because it travels it can travel from here to mararaba because it's mad, it's lost its direction. So then it's true. But generally, we have what we call owned roaming dogs. So we capture, during our vaccination, we capture roaming dogs and vaccinate them. There's also the option of the uh, oral date vaccines because some of them are difficult to capture, even though we have equipment that we can use to capture them, because they're really difficult to capture from experience. Mm. So uh, if the Department of Veterinary Public Health has sufficient funding, this can be looked into. And, and because of that, so many uh, international NGOs are working. We're all working. I, I belong to the National Technical Working Group for Rabies and for the Nation. And we are coming together. We're really working under the One Health platform to see how we can get grants aside disturbing our government uh, to do what is right, what is the, the, the responsibility of the nation to do, because we can't just only be depending on the, 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 uh, the Western world. Yeah. I mean, we need to you know, own our responsibilities and handle it well. Okay, <coughs> there's this question that's coming to my head. I don't know if I should ask it, or, but... <laughs> If I have the answer, I'll give it. If I don't, I'll say I, I don't, don't know. know. But, <laughs> but the question is just coming to my head. Please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll start asking the question. Okay, so the question is, you know, we know you've seen people who use pets. Mm. They're majorly, majorly dog for, you know, sex, sex you, you get, mm. you know. And it, it baffles the mind. Mm. Do, do people... Those kind of people, what happens, you know, can they contact, you know, the rabies? I and e, Jonathan. And secondly, is there a cure for rabies? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, so I'm sure those kind of people, hmm. if they can go to that level, hmm. it means that they are really taking care of those dogs. Yes, those people will not because they, they will know that there is rabies. And so you find those kind of people take care of the, their dog more than even their mother or father. I'm serious. People spend money on dogs. Those people are into that. I've seen some of them, but not in Nigeria, outside the country. So, um, then you said, um, how, is, there, okay. is there a cure? Yeah. So, the very terrible thing about rabies is that once the symptoms appear, death is inevitable. Yeah, so it's almost 100% fetal but the good news is the fact that we have the prevention we have the vaccines once a person is exposed you just go get vaccinated and you're complete sure the dosage. complete the dosage five in this country we're still using the five dosage five uh, yeah doses complete it and you're good okay. so please when you see the signs if you're exposed and you begin to uh, don't wait for the signs to manifest First, okay. because once they manifest you're gone i mean the person is gone, gone. yes uh, signs and the funny thing is that the signs are very similar to the, the fever flu you know oh. flu. 
uh, fever, you know, uh, sore throat, um, he, uh, delirium, confusion, uh, hallucination. Okay. And so s many times in the hospital, they get misdiagnosed for something else, okay. like a cerebral, maybe meningitis. Okay. Yes. And meanwhile, by the time they get to know it's rabies, yes. it's just too late. Thank you very much. What an interesting discussion to have with you this morning. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go on a break. While we'll come back, we'll still have more for you on Life from Abuja. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Advocate and a published author. I am the founder of Celebration, a businesswoman, and a fashion icon. I am a wealth coach and a real estate developer. I am a Makarakwe. I'm a corporate commercial lawyer and an entrepreneur. Welcome to the Wahaka. I am Ramatu Shehu Oibo, an entrepreneur and a business coach. I am the voice of an Abu Muslim man. I'm a Jabite and a lawyer. I am a polymer and a serial entrepreneur. I am Murayo Afwala Bibran, managing director, TVC Entertainment. I'm a media consultant, producer, and broadcaster. The ladies of your view are made of women from different professions, tribes, cultures, and religion. Join us every Monday to Friday as we share our views on topical and social issues. Is politics in Nigeria? Almost every part of our lives is touched by the politics we play. Governance, legislative matters, the economy, security, foreign affairs, internal affairs. Have a feel as strategic plays in the political space determine how we live in Nigeria. The players, the drama, chess piece moves. Be kept informed. Watch analysis of major happenings in the political space and how it affects you. Watch Politics on Sunday. Voted as the best TV station of the year. TVC News breaks into the core of every event as they happen. Following all nationwide big and impactful stories. Without the news from every perspective. Covering every human angle. I am Veronica bringing you the news you would want to watch. The place as the bastion of democracy. It is a place where bills are presented, motions debated, laws made, and the yearnings of the people are laid bare. Come with us as we take you through the workings of the National Assembly. We take you through plenary, committee meetings, and probes, all to ensure smooth working of the democratic process. Welcome back. The National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency and the Stakeholder Democracy Network have concluded arrangement to use satellite-based technology to identify hotspots and betanine in Ogoni land and in Niger Delta region. This from discussion during a visit by the United Kingdom-based non-profit organization to the Nosra headquarters in Abuja. The duo also expressed their firm commitment towards consolidating on the gains of their ongoing partnership to improve management in the interest of clean and sustainable environment in Nigeria's petroleum industry. Speaking at the event, the executive director SDN Adam Hill stressed uh, that the organization will support the agency for the Ogoni cleanup in the area of testing oil and water samples. We did support the agency in development of Nigerian oil spill monitor. Like you said, we have also supported the Nigerian gas plant work. And let me tell you, this has helped the agency to make significant contribution toward our country's climate change journey. Uh, two very notable tools have been produced to date, which are now uh, we're very happy to see uh, being uh, well used by Nostra. These are the oil spill monitor and the gas flare tracker which um, you know, we were delighted to play a part in co-developing with Nostra, and I think they've really served a, 
a huge purpose in providing valuable public information on the scale of some of these environmental challenges in the Niger Delta. About 10 communities within the Federal Capital Territory have been engaged in a waste to wealth project that promotes the recycling of marine plastics in their environment. The project targets at least an 80% reduction in the volume of recyclable wastes, littering drainage systems as well as reduce public uh, littering and an increase in the cleanness of the communities. In Nigeria, population explosion and rapid urbanization have led to an increase in plastic consumption, leading to an unprecedented volume of generated waste. These wastes affect climate change, threatening wildlife and public health. Plastic pollution, for one, affects all land, freshwater and marine ecosystems. It is a major driver of biodiversity loss and ecosystem degradation. Over 430 million tons of plastics are produced every year, with two-thirds being short-lived products that become waste. These animals are not using plastics to do anything. It's we really humans that are using the plastics, but because we're not taking care of them properly, it's harming the animals in the oceans. And researchers have told us that by 2050, if we don't do anything about the way we are consuming plastics and throwing them anyhow, there will be more plastic inside our ocean than fish. This town hall of some sorts is a meeting to raise awareness to communities on how to manage plastic pollution through recycling. The project aims to reduce marine plastic pollution in Bupa and Osama rivers in Lupe and Guagolada areas of the FCT through community-led waste recycling programs. The idea is to reduce, create awareness about environment, plastic menace in the environment how these plastics are finding their way into these water bodies and what we can do to reduce the plastics by managing the plastics, the men is the pollution, the women or anybody that participates in the project can also have economic benefit from it. This district head highlights the positive results from the project as he admits the awareness raised on recycling has led to a cleaner environment in their community. The community that have been selected, if you go to their environment, is different with the other people that have not been privileged to hear this information. Our environment are neater than before because of this program, because they have been participating and following, see the danger, forget about the monitoring benefit, but environment and their heads. So the people reduce the rate at which they release the plastic to the environment. Then, of course, you ask yourself, what happens after? You, you have less plastics in the environment. So this project also now incorporated skill building act activity into the project so that when they don't have the plastics again, then they can still be engaged in something. So Experts have said that a global plastics treaty is needed to ambitiously reduce plastic production, phase out harmful subsidies, eliminate products and chemicals of concern, and adopt strong national plans and rigorous reporting. Kiss Daniel, and now we move to entertainment. Kiss Daniel has been celebrating a decade at the top of Afrobeats music via his Vadu at 10 World Tour. Afrobeat sensation Kiss Daniel continues to celebrate a decade of musical excellence with the release of two highly anticipated singles, Marba and We Must. These new tracks are part of the ongoing festivals uh, surrounding his Vadu at 10 anniversary. Commemorating 10 years of groundbreaking hits, global recognition and unwavering fan support. It's a bitter sweet experience as a trading big brother Niger, no lose guard season races towards its final. As Tech No Harder, the premium touch to the entertainment with its second in 10 stars, delivering even greater excitement than the first. Building on the success of the initial challenge, Techno uh, Sport and nothing to task a push the outspace to their limits, showcasing their wit and talent in a game pair, packed even more unpredictably uh, high energy and stunning fashion moment. While the housemates battled it out at the arena, fans at home also part of the action, winning exciting prizes through Techno's online trivial act across various show social media platforms. British Niger singer Daku has opened up about coming to her Nigerian parents as a lesbian and their reactions. 
Dakota described the journey of sharing her third with her parents, noting that it was more challenging with her mother because of their bond. Dako noted that even though it was easier with her dad, he was not 100% open to the conversation. A Nigerian comedian Kojak Case is set to release his debut stand-up comedy special title, Don't Judge Me. This comedy body of work is set to premiere on Friday, of course, uh, that was yesterday, on global video sharing uh, platform YouTube via his YouTube channel. Kojak Case, in an era where Afrobeat has taken over the world and the Nigerian film industry is considered one of the fastest growing, Kojak Case is set to take the gospel of Nigerian comedy around the world. Koja Case has a unique style of telling his original Nigerian stories that makes them very relatable. In the midst of her divorce, uh, precedence with her estranged husband offset. American rapper Cardi B has stressed that she has had enough of him cheating on her. Cardi B went off on offset during a series of Instagram live sessions on September 26, 2024, stressing that he cheated on her multiple times throughout their six-year marriage, even with people that she did not like. How oops. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Well, of course, um, and that's um, um, how, of course, the entertainment um, mm. stories. We have quite interesting Dako coming out to her Nigerian parents. Always a very sensitive topic to go mm. about. And you could see, you know, she even confessed that even though the dad was maybe a bit more acceptable mm. than the mother, he was also not op open to having the whole conversations. Um, because I mean, maybe he was also trying to be truthful to himself uh, in um, in all the seconds that. But hey, Kiss Daniel. I think I think I think Chris Daniel's case is that of a Nigerian who has proven himself all throughout the years. In the last ten years, um, back to back eats, you know, you know, you know. So it's. I think that um, I think for him, uh, this is one of the best things that could happen to him. I remember sometimes early this year he had a challenge with uh, the wife. I think so. But, uh, I mean, well, I think majorly, uh, most of the things that he um, he is seeing is, mm -hmm. um, you know, the issue with um, um, not honoring um, events that he's booked for and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there was a time he had an interesting moment of, uh, with his wife, actually, because people mm -hmm. felt that, you know, he was too good for the wife and he didn't understand where they were coming from because he felt like, I mean, she was there even from the humble beginnings and all that. So I think for me, that um, definitely overshadows um, um, every other thing. And I think that Koja, Koja case, um, you know, uh, owned yesterday was also a very good one. You know, of course, Nigeria's, uh, Nigeria's, film, Nigeria's film industry is on a global stage. I think the third, the third largest or the second, I can't remember, uh, growing industry, film industry in the world. And I think that for Koja case, this is a very good one putting it out, out there uh, to make sure. Put well, you're Nigerian. saying it like he's the first. I think Nigerian comedy have also. No, no, I'm not saying as the first. I'm not saying that it's. I'm not saying that for a young man like him, you know, it's it's a good it's a good way to start, and and I think that it's good. You can compare the likes of Ewa. Ewa have been in the business for a very long time. Basketman have been in the business for. As a matter of fact, Ewa and Basket Mouse. Are coming together, so that's quite an interesting <laughs> thing. <laughs> interesting one. Okay, we'll move straight to sport now. Nigerian Super Eagles wing gas Moses Simon has been celebrated by his compatriot led by NFF. Nigerian international uh, Nans winger Moses Simon has reached a significant career milestone, making his uh, 150th appearance in the French League One. The achievement has been celebrated by the Nigerian Football Federation and FF and Nigerians highlighting the players' consistent performances since joining Nuns from Levante in 2019. Simon marked the occasion and style during Nuns' 1-1 draw against the Angus over the weekend as reported by Niger Stars Abroad. The Super Eagle star provided a crucial assist which not only contributed to the result but also etched his name in the club's history books. Well, the assist, Simon surpassed Emiliano Sellers' record, becoming Nan's all-time leading assist provider with 29 to his name. Our seven-member investigative committee has been integrated by the Ministry of Sports to aid a seamless review of its overall performance uh, and also appearance at the 2024 Paris Olympics and the Paralympics. The Federal Ministry of Sport Development says the post-games audit is geared at evaluating various aspects 
of the nation's performance in comparison with previous year's performances. Interesting. The Ministry of Development on Tuesday held a meeting with the Nigeria Olympics and Paralympics Committee, the 12th Sporting Federation that participated in the Paris Games and members of the Ministerial Performance Committee to audit and review the financial support provided as well as the sports training facilities and the effectiveness of pre-training camps. The meeting further evaluated the outcome of the Olympics and Paralympics and the long-term projection for sports development. Paralympics did not have delay of forms. We start our preparation early. We attend qualifying, which make us to be in Paris, which the sport ministry have been supporting the Paralympic athletes. I would say, first and foremost, it's a very good development that we were able to have this meeting. I can tell you it was a no hold back, and the minister, the honorable minister, was very blunt, told everybody to feel free. If we don't, if we are not able to identify the problems properly, then the issue of preferring solutions is almost, uh, I mean, non-existent. In a statement released by the sports ministry. The minister reaffirmed the ministry's commitment to take measures to avoid such occurrence in the nation's sports history. I think it's a matter of budgeting. Um, when I say budgeting, you need to be able to try to prepare very well in advance. Every year, for instance, leading to 2028 from next year, 2025, we need to be very deliberate in training. We need to be deliberate in the preparations and identifications of our, of our athletes. Government can never fund sports alone. No matter how much they put in, the private sector must come in. Which is why I'm very happy with the national sports industry policy that tends to create an enabling environment for sports to be like business. And it's a good uh, development uh, that we're able to have this kind of review. Following the outcome of the meeting on Wednesday, the Minister of Sports Development inaugurated a seven-member committee to carry out a wholesome investigation on the country's sport performance at the just-concluded 2024 just Paris Olympic and Paralympic Games. The committee members, drawn from the six geopolitical zones of the nation and chaired by Mumuni Alao, will investigate various negative events and exposures to the country during the Games. Jane Francis Nweze, TVC News, Abuja. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, um, I hope this doesn't turn to Onga, as you've said, that Onga has become a cliche <laughs> that, you know, Nigeria just pretend. Because, yes, I mean, uh, it's a committee. Um, but I feel like we already know what our problem is. I feel like um, it's something that if we're you know, very intentional about, like you heard the president of the basketball, uh, Nigeria Basketball Federation, say that the countries who win medal, they have already... Uh, have gone far in the 2028 Olympics preparations and Paralympics preparations. And um, it's very sad also when you hear administrators like the president of the uh, uh, Paralympics Committee, you know, saying we get all the supports that we need from the government. And then 12 years, you know, weren't releasing funds or didn't release enough. So now we really don't know who to blame in all of this because I'm sure you are aware that Daniel Gali who is retiring from the Weightlifting Federation, mm. is saying that for 12 years he was there, he didn't receive any funds from the sportsmen. The things that the Nigerian wrestling were doing at the Olympics, how were they able to fund it? Well, personal funds, Bielsa State Government did most of the things for them because yeah, for a long period they yeah, were camping in, in, in Bielsa. Yes, yes, I remember, I remember. Yeah, that's, that's true. So, um, you, you know you know, the thing for me is that we come every four years when we have Olympics or, or, or probably um, World Cup and we set up committee to look into all of these things. The white paper is prepared. The ministry says this and this is what we're going to And at the end of the day, nothing is being done. You know, it's just there are a lot of white papers lying around. Yeah. There's the football um, um, development one that yeah. was prepared during the time of um, the last administration. Um, you know, um, sports industry business bill mm. that is supposed to bring in more private investors. So these white papers are all lying around, and no one is doing anything about actually bringing in private um, 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 corporate organizations to actually coming and partner government, partner federations in this sports development. But yes, we hope that this committee also doesn't end up like that. It's just safe to say that Nigeria is a country of white papers. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. We'll bring you another interesting episode next week. 
while we have you talk about uh, politics, entertainment, sports, and lifestyle. I am Andemola Lawrence. All right, thank you also very much for joining us, and thanks to the men behind the camera. Bye for now. <laughs>